Yeah. Okay, uh, morning guys. Uh, Tony, do you want to kick off there? Uh, Eve Madonna here's. Sure. Um, hi Eva, how are you doing? Hi, good. Um, sorry, it's Eve, but... Oh, Eve, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Eve. you're right, Eve so Padana. Um, hi, good morning. Um, what's it like in Iceland, first of all? Oh, it's, um, it's great. Uh, I've, I've been here once before um, on a personal trip, not not soccer related, but really enjoying it. Um, we, we landed yesterday um, afternoon and so far it's been good. Um, not not the tropical heat wave you're experiencing at home, but look, it's uh, we're enjoying it so far. Good. Um, what do you have to do? Do you think? Have you been given any indication uh, by the manager that you're going to get a start in, in either of these games? I am. Um, so I I haven't um, been told that um, at this point. No. Um, so you know, obviously, it, it's quite early to be um, to be looking at lineups uh, ahead of. The first match um, on the eleventh, but it's one of those things. You know, you you, you come into camp and you, you keep the head down and work as hard as you can, um, and just kind of, you know, uh, support all the players and do your best. Well, uh, between Grace and, and, and Courtney, you have some competition for that number one jersey, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's an understatement, all right. Um, you know, of course, I'm I'm incredibly humbled to, to be here. Um, and like you said, uh, Grace and Courtney, they're just, they're excellent um, goalkeepers in great form. Um, and, you know, I'm learning a lot from them. We had our first session yesterday, so so looking forward to, to more to come. There's a lot of home-based players in, in this squad. I mean, has that given a lot of encouragement to you personally, uh, that you can impress the management while playing here? When I say here, I mean Ireland, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's that's a good point, um, Tony. And you're right; it's it's really encouraging to see, uh, especially this season. I've noticed um, quite a difference in the kind of women's national league um, in terms of um, pr- presentation and interest, and and of course, uh, quality is always. Um, we're striving to keep that pushing on, but um, yeah, no, it's it's really encouraging to have the presence really felt um, by by Vera, by Jan Willem, by Eileen. Um, so really really think it's important and it's encouraging yeah for all the girls especially my my home club with dlr waves it's really great to see more and more players and um, being added to the home base sessions um rightfully so well, the very best of luck to you thank you thank you Danny. thank you jared brown jared brown Can you unmute yourself Maybe he's struggling to hear us. Don Panther. Thanks, Gareth. Can you hear me, Eve? I can. Hi, Dan. Well, good. I uh, hope you're well. Um, just to touch on um, Courtney and Grace again, really. Um, I think you were first called up, was it 2012? Um, you know, kind of how much has the goalkeeping position kind of improved, I suppose, over that time? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, you're right. Uh, my first call up was about uh, ten years ago, and um, so, so you're right. In that in that um, decade, we've seen a lot of um, a lot of changes, and you know, one thing that has been um, consistent is is the quality. Um, so really, really encouraging to see that um, Ireland, you know, are really great at producing um, world class goalkeepers on the on the women's and men's side. So. Um, yeah, like c- coming in, of course, Emma Byrne. Um, Emma Byrne was, you know, the pinnacle of everything to aspire to um, as a young, young goalkeeper. So it's been great to see that, and you know, absolutely, I think Grace and Courtney and Marie have really um, taken that and, and you know kept the trail going. So so it is. It's encouraging, and you know, I, I get, like I said, I'm, I'm humbled to learn from them um, and to be training alongside them. And we're seeing Grace come in. Obviously, she had a really good game against Germany um, back in December. She's been uh, probably one of Reading's top players this year as well. Um, you know, is it her kind of who's kind of set the bar the highest, I suppose, for you to try and get into the side? Yeah, I mean, like, of course, um, you know, looking at uh, Grace and how she's performed at club level and how she's performed um, on the international stage, um, not just in, you know, the recent weeks and months but over years of um of a career that's that's really just 
uh, it keeps elevating um, year after year. So you're right, like the, the bar is set, but um, you know, internally I have my own kind of goals to focus on and, and you know, I set my standards um, just as high and striving to, to reach them um, as well. So it's, it's one of those things that, you know, you look at, um, you know, the goalkeepers you're training alongside and they're nothing short of spectacular. So, so it's, um, it's good to kind of have them as, as I guess, icons to, to keep pushing. That's brilliant. Thanks very much, Eve, and uh, best of luck for this week. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Uh, Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly online. What's in there? Mm -hmm. Joe Kelly or Jared Brown? No, anyone else for the life? Off the air, you know. Yeah, Jared, go ahead, Jeff. Hi, Eve, how are things? Jared Brown here from Irish Football Fan TV. So, you're one of eight homegrown players in the squad. Obviously, playing the league this year, how good do you think the standard has been so far? Um, like I said, uh, it's been really, really impressive. Um, Again, I think this year is another big step up uh, for the Women's National League. Um, and like looking across, it, it's great to see uh, all the clubs kind of pu putting f uh, feet forward and you know trying trying to make steps. Uh, I know myself with the waves. You know this is it's been a few years of building, um, and I think now after the first round, we're starting to see kind of um, I can't, we're kind of catching a glimpse of of what might be out there. You know if we we keep pushing, so. You know, um, the mid-season break has come at a at a good time, and we've got some things to work on, and we're looking forward to keep pushing on. Yeah, you mentioned that with, with waves this season, you're fourth in the table heading into the break, nine points off top spot behind P Mount. Overall, how would you rate the season? Yeah, well, overall, can't really rate it when it's only been the first round, but um, the first round. Like I said, we've, we've got eight games and we missed that. We don't have our ninth game played yet as we were idle um, this past week. So looking back just on the first round, um, you know, some, some good results there. Uh, someone's ground out and, you know, some ones we'd be disappointed in. Um, you know, we've, we've kept it tight at the back um, as much as possible. We've had um, a wealth of different goal scorers. We've had some great goals scored um, and even more importantly, lots of opportunities created. So I think we're really relying on the depth and breadth of our squad, um, which is brilliant. So it, it's a testament to the, the hard work of the girls and the, the backroom staff and the managers who have really put in um, just an unprecedented amount of work this season. You know, I'm so very grateful for all that and hopefully more to come. Thanks, Eve, and best of luck with upcoming matches. Thank you, Jared. Cheers. OK, uh, switch to the daily section on Kelser. Uh, hey, Eve, how are you doing? Hi, on how are you? Hi. Uh, just pressing, you said you've been in Iceland before on holidays. When was that, or where did you go? <laughs> yeah, um, I was here, I guess, two years ago for um, for my sister's birthday. We just came, we did a little tour. <laughs> yeah, it was just uh, it was to celebrate her 30th birthday. Oh, so just like doing all the sites of Blue Lagoon and all that stuff, was it? That's it, yeah. We went to the Secret Lagoon. We were up in South Loss, um, down Reykjavik, then I went to Diamond Beach. You know, took in as much as you could. Yeah, is there any chance of doing any of that this time, or did COVID stop it all? Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest, um, this camp, like, you know, uh, it's it's really focused on these two um, friendly matches. You know, in in terms of our preparation for the upcoming campaign. Um, so whether some sightseeing creeps in, um, of course, we have to we have to pay um, particular attention to the COVID protocols. Um, the people of Iceland so far have been incredibly uh, welcoming and have been really, really just amazing um, so far. So we wouldn't want to, um, you know, I guess, uh, overstep or, or anything like that. So I'm not sure personally if there are plans to see sites, but, um, you know, of course, we're looking for two good results. Yeah. Has Vera said anything to you about how she's going to manage the goalkeepers this week? Like, are you all promised minutes or is it down to training? Um, as far as I know, it's uh, there's no um, there's no guarantee of minutes for everyone um, in this uh, this trip. You know, it's again as it's the last 
kind of event before um, our campaign starts uh, in th this autumn. Uh, I think it's kind of really just about um, kind of getting a cohesive um, you know, as possible and kind of refining things. So without wishing to speak to tactics or anything like that, I think um, that's kind of the, the position, um, I believe. Yeah, and um, I'm sure you've been asked this a thousand times before, but look, how did you qualify for Ireland? Um, I mean, oh, so in terms of um, personally, like, um, right. Uh, so my mum is from Tyrone and um, she was born there, she was uh, raised there and then moved to Canada um, after completing her secondary education. Um, or sorry, uh, she, she did her third level um, in Belfast. I, so when she moved to Canada, uh, she met my father and, and that's kind of it. So I was raised, uh, born and raised in Canada um, and I played underage with Canada for a time. Um, and it was kind of after, after attending the, the 2010 World Cup in Trinidad and Tobago, um, you know, I kind of really set my sights on on doing anything possible um, to play for Ireland and to represent Ireland. And luckily, that came about um, later that year. So it's very grateful. Yeah, I know Ireland were at that World Cup in Trinidad and Tobago as well. Like, were, mm -hmm. were you staying in the same hotel, or like, did you let them know then, or we were? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, we were, we were in the same group, um, as it happens, and, you know, at that time, I, I didn't, I didn't reach out, um, it was only after, after the, um, tournament, um, it was, you know, in the process of, uh, trying to obtain a Division One scholarship that I came into contact with, um, with the Irish connection, um, in terms of soccer, and kind of pursued it then. Yeah, and, just funny, um, are your family still in Canada, are they? Uh, yeah, so my, my two my two parents and my brother are in Canada, uh, my sister's in London, and then my mum's respective family is is most still in Ireland. Uh, and, and was the move, I mean, I know it was originally, it was, it was Cork before DLR, wasn't it? Was that it was. With, with international football in mind, or I don't know, was it work, work that brought you here? Yeah, no, um, it was, of course, um, like most decisions in my life based around based around soccer and so because of my involvement in the world university games i'd been in contact with um some of the, the members of the ucc uh squad so uh, it was kind of that bridge that that was built and i came over to do my postgraduate in law um at ucc got in very shortly after with cork city um sent a few years down in cork and then moved up to dublin um to continue working um in law all right thanks very much best of luck thanks Owen. mark mccadden Steve, how are you? Um, Hi, Mark. I was, actually, I was actually at the World Cup covering it, so I was at the game, Ireland-Canada game, and um, it was a 1-0 was a win for Ireland. So it, it must be, it must have been strange kind of going from being on the bench, watching the likes of Grace, Megan Campbell, Kira Grant, Denise O'Sullivan, Harriet Scott, and Rihanna Jarrett were in that side mm -hmm. as well. Now, it must have been strange going from that to actually being in the same team as them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you're right. Like, there's been so many success stories from that squad. So it is. It's great to see. Um, and again, uh, just another testament to the development of uh, underage football in Ireland. Um, so yeah, no, really positive. And yeah, the transition. To be honest, uh, fortunately, because of the personalities and um, culture of the squad, it wasn't. It wasn't a very difficult transition at all. Fortunately. Yeah. Um, just. Uh, I mean, when you're kind of uh, on the other side, I suppose, like. Watching the Irish team, uh, were you? Do you remember kind of your your thoughts about them, or were you impressed with any of the players in particular? Yeah, um, from what I remember, and I say that not just because of the time. Um, at the time, I was severely concussed <laughs> as well. Um, but no, I, I do. Um, I just I do remember sitting there and watching and just thinking, you know what? Like you can just see. Um, we talk about the DNA of an Irish player. I am. Um, and it's boys it evident um watching watching them play on the pitch so so again um anything i can contribute to that type of um you know i guess personality or uh images you know humbled i'm humbled go on tell us how you got concussed oh training during training yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so i was out for um i'd say it was yeah probably about a month um afterwards just yeah, took a bad, took a bad um, knock. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah just, doing and, and just, just, just finally, um, I mean, obviously, when you came into the Irish squad, then um, Emma Byrne, I suppose, had the number one jersey, and you know there was no way she was letting it go for a while yet. Yeah. Now that she's gone, do you, do you feel like there's a real opening? Um, I know Grace has gotten the last couple of games, um, but you know there has been a little bit of swapping in, uh, in that position. Yeah, um, like I said, you know, there's um, there's no shortage of of quality um, in, in the goalkeeper kind of realm. So, you know, in terms of opportunities, look, we just kind of see how it goes. You keep pushing, um, keep working, uh, you know, domestically um, in, in my own club. And, you know, when you come onto this stage, then you just, you, you give of what you can um, and everything that you can. So um, in terms of, you know, opportunities, like I'm a big believer in, you know, keeping, keeping working hard, keeping the head down and, you know, focusing on, on a goal and um, kind of looking at every angle, every opportunity to kind of develop and to, you know, to seek help when it's when it's offered and, and you know, keep pushing forward. Cool. Cheers. Best of luck. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. Dave Kelly. Hi, just, just on that point, I, I noticed okay. you said before that, you know, it, it's mortifying you've been in the squad um, for, for so long and have had such limited exposure. I mean, how do you balance that in your head in terms of a the competitive nature of others perhaps at the moment being better than you and any frustration possibly you may have in that you haven't been able to push yourself forward and develop your own skills and um, maybe push yourself in the shop window more than you have before uh, thanks David for the question um, and just like just to deal, start with the first point, like it's not like I'm not mortified at, at the time. It's you know kind of taken to to push on. Like that's I wouldn't put it like that. I I was just thinking just because you know how fast does does ten years go? Apparently a lot quicker than I I thought. Um, but in terms of like you know you can't really I can't look at things and be disappointed about the years that have gone by or you know the time on the bench. Like you know every opportunity I've I've taken to learn, to train, to develop um, as a person and a player. You know, I've been exposed. Like, look who the names we've just been talking about in this call. You know, Emma Byrne, Grace Maloney, Courtney Brosnan, Marie um, Horan. Like, it's it's brilliant. Um, I've worked with many of the coaches, many of the managers. I've had opportunities at the World University Games, um, and you know, and that's just football-wise. During those ten years, you know, I I suffered a cruciate injury, which put me back. Um, you know, I did what six years of third level education, um, and I'm due to qualify as a solicitor at the end of this year. So, it's been it's been a balancing act. Um, you know, just like just like everyone else, you you kind of balancing different aspects of your life. So, again, you know, I'm I'm here this week, and um, I'm looking forward to to keep pushing on. Um, and after that, then you know, we go back to the Women's National League and. I'm looking forward to you know to driving out the rest of the season uh, and keep striving and look you know of course a goal is to finish as high up the table with the waves um, but also I'm looking looking forward to to the uh, start of the campaign this autumn you know I want to do everything I can to put myself in contention and just finally uh, it's interesting we were speaking to your successor in the men's team in Cork to those of Benny um, uh, last weekend, and he was very interesting in terms of, of acknowledging his status as a, um, I hate using the word role model, but as someone who, could, who people can look towards uh, and see a diversity in the Irish squad. In terms of yourself and your own diverse background, I know Tyrone is diverse enough for some of us, but um, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you acknowledge that? Um, is it just a private thing for you to acknowledge, or are you kind of conscious that publicly people will see that you know the Irish team can can embrace all sorts of different nationalities and different antecedents yeah um you know again I think it's we're starting to see it a lot more in in men's women's football um we're seeing kind of the we'll call it visible diversity um for this purpose obviously we know there's a wide um, array of diversity within the squad um, but in terms of visible um, diversity yeah you're right it's it's coming along and you know 
let's say in the last 10 years, it's, I think it's starting to reflect more of Irish society. And I think that's brilliant. And um, so like I, I wouldn't call myself a role model, but um, like I said, if, if that's what's in the, in the public eye, then, you know, I'd be happy to stand up and, and say, you know, I've enjoyed my time and I'm looking forward to kind of encouraging um, as much diversity because I think it makes us stronger. Thank you. Thanks, David. Okay, um, just double check here now. John, you want to yeah. ask me? Yep, yeah. sorry, Hi I didn't girl. see you there yet. Hey, how are you doing? Hi, how are you, John? Good, thanks, and you? Good, thank you. Just interested in, 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 your, uh, in your work career there, you mentioned you've, in your sixth year of um, toward level uh, to become solicitor. Do you know at this stage what area you're going to specialise in or what your interest is in? Yeah, um, so yes, so no, I've, I've completed um, six years in third level. I did an undergraduate degree, then um, a two-year postgraduate degree. Um, and right now I'm uh, in my second year of a training contract. So this is, um, actually I'm coming up to my final exams at the Law Society. So um, like I said, all being well, I'll be qualified at the end of the year. Um, Currently, I'm working in a commercial practice in Dublin. Um, it's one of Ireland's leading law firms, and I'm really enjoying it. I've had different rotations um, across the firm, but I'm really liking the corporate side of things, and I'm I'm hopeful I'll be able to to keep keep working um, in this area. And when you were growing up, um, was the ambition to become a professional footballer or was there a realisation that there are such limited opportunities and presumably you knew that when you came to Ireland that there's not even semi-professional status for players here that it would be your um, your, your, your legal career that would be your your backbone yeah um, that's an interesting question um, you know when I was growing up I all I thought about was soccer to be honest like you know I called it soccer um back in Canada so it was it was everything I I thought of but in terms of like the career pathway to become a professional soccer player at the time I didn't see it like I saw myself I saw myself training you know um and underage I was training uh seven times a week like it was full on you know so the studies definitely took a back seat definitely at that time you know um but it, it's funny it's one of those things and I think that's why the 20 by 20 campaign was so brilliant um, and it was so realistic because you know if you can't see it if you don't see it then sure how could you pursue it and um, so at the time that's kind of what I saw but um, no I think so far in my life I've been able to strike a good balance between between what I um, my two biggest passions you know I always say like and uh, it's like the law academics are my left hand and you know soccer is like my right hand you know how can you it's really really hard to um pick one of the over the other but um you know again at this at this time i'm enjoying playing at the highest level that the country has to offer at the moment uh, i'd love to see if he can go further um absolutely um but i i know in myself i need to finish out my um traineeship as a training solicitor and get qualified <laughs> 